Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, this is Lithium017 from my channel, Nintendo Collecting 101, bringing you collecting tip number 83, Gaming Setup. If you're a collector, you are almost most definitely also a gamer, hopefully you're playing all those games you are collecting and the consoles and controllers, and you might want to have an environment and a gaming setup that really makes sense so that you don't have to change out a lot of cords. So what you see here on this bigger television, this is a Sony Trinitron, it's pretty big. This is a retro TV, but what you see is I have quite a few consoles set up here, and I have quite a few consoles set up over there on my second television as well. What I decided what would work best for my gaming room is just to have almost every Nintendo console on each TV. That's the way I did it. But how did I do it? What TV did I use? And what other things can I suggest? First and foremost, if you're playing on old school games, I really do suggest you get one of these old school televisions. Like I said, this is a Sony Trinitron. It works quite well. For the NES, sometimes there are some lines on the screen, so you might want to always test the TV before you actually set it up and use it. This TV weighs hundreds of pounds, it took four of us to move in here. But the best part about this TV is how many ports it has to hook up consoles. This one does have one in the front, the AV cables, it has I think three more in the back, and it also has one that I can hook up through cable. So on this TV, I have my Super Nintendo system, my N64, and my GameCube all set up through AV cables through the back, and my Wii one is set up through the front. I also have a Sega Genesis set up, but you can't see it that well, but it's underneath there. That one is plugged in through the cable. So I am able to get five, t five different consoles on this one TV, which is amazing. Another way to set up a lot of consoles on a TV is to get some sort of a splitter. In this case, this TV, I'm not exactly sure which one it kind of was, but this TV didn't have enough of the AV ports. So what I decided to do was I bought a splitter. Now a splitter looks like this. It just simply has AV input, which is there, which you run out of the TV, and then you run all your TV consoles in through here. It also comes with a switch that says one, two, or three. So one for me would actually be the Super Nintendo, two would be my N64, and three is my Nintendo Wii. And that way I have three consoles set up instead of just one. What you do need to get with this, though, is AV cables that are strictly AV to AV, meaning that they have the red, the white, and the yellow, and the opposite end of them also has the red, white, and the yellow. They're not very many dollars, especially if you go to something like a Radio Shack. Now it's called, I think, the Source. Same with the Splitter. If you want to get the Splitter, it's only maybe $15 or less. I'm sure you could find them online. They're all over eBay as well. They're not very expensive. So here, the NES through the cable, three consoles through the AV. What I also suggest doing through the NES if you want, and maybe you didn't know this, but the side of your NES console has two output, a red and a yellow, and that's all you need. So sometimes I actually plug this NES, even though it's into this TV, also into that TV in the front there. I just unplug those cables, and I use one of my dual AV cable ports, which works out really, really well. And I just dropped my coin, but that's okay. When you're setting up your consoles, it's really simple to have a lot of different consoles on there and you just change some cords, change the AV input so that you can play as many games as possible. What you might also notice is that right down here, I have a controller for each system ready to use. I don't always leave them plugged in just because that kind of looks a bit messy to me. The cords go everywhere. Over here, I keep two controllers of each console to use, so it's very quick for me to get at the console and to play games with a lot of my friends. I make sure all the controllers are tested and they work, of course. Those cables that you see down there, they actually belong to this AV splitter, so I'm just going to roll that back because that's where that would normally go, so I hook up everything to my TV. The next tip that I can have or suggest to you is to definitely keep track of all of your cords. You're going to have a lot of cords and a lot of things to plug in. I got this heavy duty extension cord. Now this one's a Kingsington. My university actually had these and they really inspired me to get one for myself. I really like the color coordination of everything. So there's eight different things that I can plug into this. And the best part about this too is that it has some sort of a protection, like a surge protection protector. So I can hit that button and now everything is off. I'm done. Everything's off, everything's unplugged, I'm safe. 
I can hit it again and everything's back online. This one's also really good because some of these old school plugins, this one's the Sega Genesis, this one is I believe for the Nintendo Entertainment System, they're huge, they're bulky, they take up a lot of space, so this particular extension cord does have those inserts sideways or straight on like this so you actually have room to plug everything in. So I definitely suggest you pick up one of these, pay the extra money, get one that will be safe for you because having a lot of long extension cords is not always the ideal method or the ideal way. The last thing that I could probably suggest is to have any sort of chargers also available, easy to plug in your controllers to get them charged so that you can game again. So here are my Nyko charging stations for my Wii. If you collect other consoles or game on the 360 or PlayStation, maybe you have other charging methods. But definitely getting some charging stations for your controllers so you're not wasting a lot of batteries is a great idea. So first and foremost, select a good TV. Clearly, I do not have an HD television down here yet for my Wii U, but I will get that. HD televisions are great for newer game systems. Old school televisions are better for old school game systems. So definitely think of your TV. Think about how you're going to connect a lot of different consoles to your TV. Have controllers ready. Think about your plug-in system for all of your cords. And definitely consider getting your charging stations. One additional thing is you might want to use elastic bands to keep all of your cords neat and tidy behind the TV, which I did do, but I'm not moving that 200-pound TV on my own. It's just simply too heavy. Thank you for watching Collecting Tip number 83. Feel free to fill that like bucket. Follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, and remember, as always, game on.